And now I'd like to invite Anne Venue from, an ex is an executive from ABB, and this morning we had already a very compelling uh, presentation uh, from ABB. So please uh, share with us uh, your thoughts and recommendations for grid modernization. Can someone help here with the presentation? Okay. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Varma and uh, di distinguished my co-panelists. It's once again a great uh, pleasure to be here. And this is the fourth edition of uh, ISGF. I've been uh, associated personally for the last four years. So Richard gives always a tough challenge, huh? 10 minutes. You have to talk about the grid edge technologies. Okay, I'll try my level best to complete uh, to the 10 minutes. Is this forward? Okay, thank you. You know, since morning we've been talking about uh, uh, the digitalization, new grid, power systems of the future, and grid technologies, and so on and so forth. Let's understand what is shaping up the future of the grid. Why are we talking suddenly in you know, the future of the grid? We have been, uh, all of us are the power systems engineers, electrical engineers. We have been dealing last several decades. So suddenly we are saying that, you know, power systems of the future. Where is this coming from? So let's take a step back and talk about these global challenges which is driving transformation at a pace never seen before. At a pace never seen before. There are tremendous global challenges. We all know the world population is moving towards mega cities, a huge challenge and the pressure on the urbanization. You go to any country, anywhere, the challenge on the urban mega cities are increasing thing. But at the same time, while we need to also take care of these challenges, we also take care of uh, our earth and resources. And you see my left hand side of my, my, my slide, you can see that the Paris climate, the recent Paris climate agreement has come up with a three major conclusions on the temperature financing CO2 target. This is the good part. And this is fundamentally driving all the nations, all the policy makers, all the utilities towards that. And consequently, the power sector is transforming at a pace never seen before. Power generation moving towards irreversibly towards renewables, more sun and solar. The customer are expected to be diverse because the consumers are also started producing the solar power or whatever it is. So what we are calling the new pro-consumers. And all these factors are contributing to energy revolution. You can just see on the, my top of uh, the chart, the red bars and the, and the gray bars, talking about how the energy mix is going to change in the next 15 years. This is across the world in average. So a lot of pro proje projections, so just take an average in that. Renewable, the energy mix is changing the renewable. It is also another important fundamental thing is the bulk versus distribution. Previously, if you look at it, we always used to have a power plant at the pit heads and transfer all the way thousands of kilometers over a load heads. Today, we are talking about the decentralization. You have a load here in this Manaksha center, set up a rooftop, generate it here, consume it here, and if you have a more, you can pump it back to the grid. And the bottom most, you can see the major elements of the evolving grid, which are the six elements of evolving grid, which we have, ABB was the first one to uh, articulate this in the Paris SIGRE conference three years back, and ever since then, we are continuously talking about the six elements, talking about the interconnections and the microgrids, and energy storage and power quality, digitalization and the new business model. Take for example, the new forms of loads. We have been talking since morning about the electrical vehicles. Electrical vehicles for sure is a new form of energy, a new, form, new forms of loads. But at the same time, it, what it does, it also pollutes the network. So we got to be mindful of these kind of changes happening in our our uh, industry in a, in a pace, at a pace never seen before in that. 
We all know that you can see the traditional grid versus uh, new grid. The distributed generation, although small in number, steadily growing to become a significant component of a grid. The new grid, what's the difference with the new grid? New grid means there are several feeding points. You generate in this particular place and inject it to the grid. And several takeoff points. You talked also in the morning that the, the energy flow is no more unidirectional. It's not even bi-directional, it's a multiple direction. So power will come from multiple sources, flow in a multiple directions, and will be more environment friendly. So that's what is the new grid evolving in every geography we have seen. In some countries, is a faster pace. Some countries, they're catching up with that. But the underlining bottom line is that the new evolving grid is a full of complexity, full of you know combination of various resources, but it's a good for the environment. And, and also the global trend, you can see the energy and grid transformation, the global trend, the big shift in the electrical value chain. On the supply side, there's a dramatic renewable growing, leading to increasing interpretancy, greater volatility, less predictable. We all know that, you know, managing such a uh, large, you know, megawatt and gigawatt scale, uh, scale uh, renewables is always a challenge. So what do we need to, ma to manage that? Leading to increasing complexity of the grid and need for ensuring stability. We all know that, you know, while we need these new renewables, but at the same time, the consequence is to ensure that we maintain the grid stability and efficiency in that. Furthermore, the interconnections are expected with a need for a bulk transfer over a long distance, you know. We have a commissioned uh, HVDC link in India right from northeast to Agra over a distance of 2,000 kilometers and we transmit a power of 6,000 megawatt. So how do we ensure that you know, these long distance, a bulk power like a power superhighways, we are able to en we ensure the stability of the grid. And the renewable energy sources are expected to become more distributed as we talked about the, the trend is towards distributed energy resources, more and more coming from the central to distribution. With the increasing rooftop solar generation driving the need for higher control, optimization, and local level. As you know, we always, uh, now we are saying uh, companies like us, we are primarily providing, you know, infrastructure to enable flow of electrons. Whether we give you a switch gear or the GIS or the relay, you close the circuit, you enable the flow of the electrons. But today what we are going to do now is we are adding a differentiation. The differentiation in terms of, in terms of the control, in terms of the optimization, so that you are better positioned not only allow the flow of the electronics, but at the same time in a position to control much transparently, much better way, almost close to the real time in that. Energy and grid transformation is the real, as you see the ecosystem, due to the growth in the distributed capabilities. The growth in the distributed energy resources is leading to a bi-directional, multi-directional multi information flow. And grid operators need to respond to a complex and distributed network. And consumers become prosumers, and they want to maximize value from their assets. And utilities is a challenge from the utilities. Just imagine and everybody in, the, in a Delhi start producing their own rooftop, then what can utilities like Tata Power Delhi and other people start doing it? They need to invent the new business models in that. We are not there yet, but it is in that direction. If you look at all this sh shaded the thing in between, is all physical asset, what we call the grid edge technology. Everything before, behind the meter behind the meter of the grid edge technology. And they are in a physical form and getting more and more transforming into different things. So the new opportunities for a digital solutions and uh, services at the edge of the grid. We're talking about the new uh, technology and new words, you know, we're talking about the edge of the grid. Because we have a grid, traditionally if you see the grid and you have a physical assets, 
and through distribution companies, you connect to, to the consumers. But today we are talking about the digital services. There is a need for a new digital solutions and services. And the digital grid is an important prerequisite for the efficient and flexible operation. And that's all about the new grid edge technology is what we are talking about. So I don't want to go into the much details. As we know that there's a physical assets, we've got a microgrids, we've got a power quality, we've got a distribution, we've got a e-mobility, we have a metering, and then the new digital services are coming. Energy as a service could be, okay? And financing and so on and so forth. I still have three minutes, right? No? Okay. <laughs> Trying to negotiate. Okay. And the last one. Okay, let me give it here. ABB in a grid technologies. We have complete offerings, products, services, systems to take care of this new paradigm shift of our power systems of the future. For every need, the technology, the good part is the technology is available to us. The only thing is we need to start investing right now to take care of the future of the grid. If we are able to do it, then we can say that yes, the power system of the future is secure to take care of the so much of volatility and so much of, uh, uh, un so much of, uh, you know, uh, whatever the uh, kind of uh, interme intermittency, intermittency and volatilities are coming in our, uh, in our big way, in our energy mix in that. With that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, listening to me. I'm really looking forward to some of the things during the question hours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.